Welcome to this lecture on environmental assessment for a bioprocess design. We will discuss the life cycle assessment method, LCA, since this is the most widely used and accepted tool for environmental impact assessment. This activity is still part of step four, assessment and analysis. The goal of this lecture is to discuss the most relevant concepts and the necessary steps to perform a systematic environmental assessment. The LCA methodology allows the compilation and evaluation of potential environmental impacts of a product process or service through its entire life cycle. In addition, LCA is standardized by the ISO 14040 series by the International Organization of Standardization. According to ISO, the LCA framework consists of four steps, goal and scope definition, inventory analysis, impact assessment, and interpretation. Interpretation is done at each step, but we will come back to that later in this lecture. LCA can be applied to different, for different purposes, for example, decision-making support, communication, or development of process, products, and value chains whenever environmental considerations are taken into account. Now, let me walk you through these four steps using our case study as an example. In step one, goal and scope definition, the purpose of the study and the problem formulation are specified. In this case study, we want to know what are the environmental impacts of the bio-based production of PDO, and additionally, how do these environmental impacts compare to the petrochemical counterpart and also to other LCA studies. Next, the system boundaries are defined. Here, all relevant life cycle stages shall be included as far as possible. For example, a cradle to grave system for a bio-based product covers the extraction and production of all raw materials and energy carriers used in the agricultural phase, as well in the transformation, use, and waste management phases. The last two phases are the same for the bio-based and for the petrochemical PDO, since the product is chemically identical and therefore the system boundaries for this uh, lecture can be set as cradle to gate. Bio-based PDO is produced via fermentation of sugars, which can be obtained from various sugar or starchy crops, or from lignocellulosic biomass. For this lecture, the raw material selected is sugar from the Brazilian sugarcane industry. The functional unit is the basic unit to perform the study or for any comparison. In this case, the functional unit is one kilogram of PDO at the same quality conditions of the petrochemical PDO. The second step on an LCA is the life cycle inventory, LCI, where data collection is done. This is one of the most time intensive activities of an LCA. The type of data and their collection typically relates to um, two types of systems, background systems and foreground systems. For foreground systems, um, the foreground systems refer to the data needed to model the specific activity of interest. In our case, it is the fermentative production of PDO from sugars. And for this, we have the mass and energy balances to complete the data inventory. The background systems refer to generic materials, energy carriers, transport modes, and waste management systems. This data can be typically be found in uh, databases and uh, in literature. Although it is in principle possible to investigate the environmental impacts of the sugar production from any milling facility, for simplicity in this lecture, we will assume the sugar cane production and processing as a background system. The average Brazilian sugar cane industry produces five main products, including sugar, ethanol, and electricity. This is a multi-product system, and this condition is known as multifunctionality. In such cases, the environmental impacts of the process as a whole must be distributed among the products. This is called allocation. ISO 14044 recommends to avoid allocation by using either subdivision or system expansion, which means reducing the multi-product system to single product systems. The second option is to allocate the environmental impacts by partitioning based on physical relationships like mass or energy allocation. The authors of the LCA study for the Brazilian sugarcane industry used the second option. They also analyzed the effects of the energy and economic allocation on the LCA results. 
the mass and energy balances obtained in the technical feasibility analysis are then used to complete the normalized inventory tables. For example, here we can see all inputs used in the and the wastewater generated per one kilogram of uh, PDO produced, as discussed in week three. The third step is the life cycle impact assessment, LCIA, which aims to describe the impacts caused by the emissions and consumption of resources over the whole life cycle. This is achieved by aggregating the inventory results into selected categories according to the type of environmental impact they contribute to. For example, all emissions of greenhouse gases may be aggregated into one indicator for global warming and all acidifying emissions can be aggregated into one indicator for acidification. These calculations are based on the models describing the cause effect change of natural systems for midpoint and endpoint levels of aggregations. There are several well-known methods available for midpoint, endpoint, and combined assessments. For additional information about the impact categories and methods, you can check the Hitch Hikers Guide uh, to LCA and the ILCD Handbook. Keep in mind that the selection of the impact assessment method, the impact categories, and the definition of the design level of integration have to be consistent with the goal and scope definition and with the way you would like to discuss your results with the audience. For our case study, we focus on two midpoint impact categories, climate change and non-renewable energy use. The second aspect of the LCIA is the characterization of the category indicators. This is a quantitative step where the size of the environmental impacts are calculated per category using the characterization factors. These factors can be found in databases for impact assessment methodologies or in literature. For example, in our case study, we use the greenhouse gas emissions and the primary energy use values reported by Seabra and colleagues. The tables with the LCIA results and characterization factors are then completed for all emissions. The table on your left shows the characterization factors or the emission values taken from literature for both categories. These factors are then multiplied to the life cycle inventory results and then the impact assessment results are obtained. Finally, all contributions are added up resulting in the total scores for the environmental categories of interest. Normalization, grouping, and weighting are optional steps which aim to provide additional understanding of the magnitude and significance of each impact category. For example, normalized results are calculated relative to a reference value or system, allowing direct comparison of alternative processes or products for the specific impact categories. These steps are not commonly applied for process design due to the high level of aggregation of results. However, this type of results are preferred for communication and for decision making. The last step of an LCA is the interpretation of results, which can be done from different perspectives. Consistency check refers to confirming that all assumptions, methods, models, and data are consistent with the goal and scope definition. Completeness check is applied to ensure that all relevant information and data needed for interpretation is available and used. Contribution analysis allows, the, allows to identify the flows and processes contributing the most to the environmental impacts. For example, in this case, steam consumption and sugar have the highest contributions to primary energy use, while sugar and electricity consumption are the major contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. Comparison analysis is useful to put into perspective the obtained results with respect to a reference system and to other reported studies. Here, for example, the greenhouse gas emissions and the primary energy use are compared to the data reported by DuPont and by other two studies on PDO production. But in all of those cases, the feedstock considered was corn from the US. The same studies also report the environmental impacts for petrochemical PDO as shown in the screen. When comparing bio-based products versus uh, fossil-based products, there is a fundamental difference. The carbon embedded in the bio-based product, or at least a fraction of it, is biogenic carbon. This means the carbon was captured from the atmosphere during the agricultural phase 
and therefore the emissions resulting from the combustion of the bio-based product do not contribute to additional emissions to the atmosphere, unlike uh, fossil-based uh, products. Then, for a fair comparison, the emissions resulting from the combustion of the fossil-based PDO during waste incineration, for example, uh, should be included in the results. Another method to account for the biogenic carbon embodied in the bio-based product is the direct deduction from the calculated gross uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Finally, sensitivity, uncertainty, and scenario analysis are also useful tools to determine the influence of assumptions, methods, data, and any structural or statistical imprecision on the LCA results. For example, what would be the LCA results if different allocation methods were used for the sugarcane uh, industry products or if different geographic allocations and feedstocks were considered as shown in the screen, or if the analysis were performed for the time frame 2030. Those are all typical questions often addressed in the interpretation of LCA results. We can conclude this lecture by saying that LCA results are not only about obtaining numbers, but most important about the data used and assumptions made behind the results. So be very critical when looking at reported environmental impacts of any system. Uh, thank you for your attention and to see you in the next lecture.